Pokemon trading card game has around 14,000 Pokemon cards in existence. Of these 14,000s, only a select amount are legal for competitive play. These are that are sets that are Sword and Shield base set all the way up until Silver Tempest. In April 2023, the Pokemon trading card game rotation is going to be occurring. So of the cards that are currently standard legal, 1,071 cards are going to be rotating. Now, with this, as a Pokemon business owner, how are you supposed to know which cards are worth selling right now before rotation, which cards are worth money, which bulk cards should you be pulling out of bulk? Well, today on the Lab TCG, I'm going to be answering that question. If you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button. My name is Will, and I make videos all about Pokemon TCG business content. Today, we're going to be going through 10 cards that are going to be rotating come April 2023 that are currently selling for a market uh, marketplace price of of over 50 cents on TCG player that you can sell now before they start to fall. Why are these prices going to fall? Well, when the Pokemon TCG rotation occurs, sets that are with the regulation D mark are going to be no longer available for competitive play. That means the reason that the prices are up in the first place are going to start falling as competitive players no longer want these cards. Today's video is going to not only show you the 10 cards that I would be selling right now if I was a Pokemon business owner like you, which I am, and how you can go and find this information for yourself if you want a more comprehensive list of all the different types of cards that you could be selling. Today, we're going to be going over near mint commons and uncommons that are worth over 50 cents on TCG Player Marketplace, and I will show you how you can go and figure out reverse hollows and hollow rares and ultra rares that are worth selling depending on your business. Here at the Lab TCG, we do a lot of cards bulk, a lot of Pokemon bulk buying, a lot of Pokemon bulk selling. As you can see from the background behind me, there are tons of commons and uncommons that I've acquired for anywhere from four cents to under a penny that I go ahead and sell on TCG Player and eBay and different marketplaces for more money. Now, I've been sitting on some of these cards for a long time. Uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've been buying bulk for years. Some of these Pokemon cards I've had since they were a penny, and now that I'm looking at this list, they've 10x, 50x into some of the prices that you see here today. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into what cards I would be selling right now if I were you. So first is Quick Ball. Now, interesting to note, I have not only the Sword and Shield Quick Ball, but I also have the Fusion Strike Quick Ball. Now, you might be confused as to why both of these cards are in my hand as something you should be selling right now. The Sword and Shield base set one makes sense because it's Regulation D mark and it's Sword and Shield. The set's been out for several years. But why Fusion Strike? Well, if oh, Fusion Strike. Well, if you look closely, Fusion Strike also has that Regulation D mark right there. So what that means is both of these cards, Quick Ball as a whole, will no longer be available for competitive play. As of right now, Quick Ball is standing at a 50 cent marketplace price on TCG Player in near mint condition. So if you're buying bulk from Sword and Shield and Fusion Strike and you're getting Quick Balls for a penny, that means you can 50x your revenue from Quick Ball. Of course, you need to account for selling fees and all of that stuff, but Quick Ball is 100% a card that you should be selling before the rotation, because if there's no expanded format in play, competitors are not going to need Quick Ball anymore, and the price is going to fall. So, Quick Ball is number one. Number two is going to be Horror Psychic Energy. Now, Horror Psychic Energy comes from Rebel Clash. This card has been good in Dragapult VMAX and several other decks in the current standard format. Over time, as different decks move and change, some cards come in and some cards come out. And as you'll notice, Rebel Clash has a lot of good bulk cards that you can then sell for a profit, and much more than the penny that you probably paid for them. Now, Horror Psychic Energy is currently sitting at a 55 cent marketplace price on TCG Player, meaning it checks our criteria, definitely worth selling at a near mint. Now, the next card is a card that's kind of crept up in value recently, and that's going to be Palpad. This is currently 61 cents on TCG player market price. It's an uncommon from Sword and Shield base set, and it's very good. It allows you to shuffle two supporters from your discard pile into your deck. Once again, a very competitive card. As you'll notice with all the cards on this list, they're all competitive cards. So next up, Capture Energy. Capture Energy is from Darkness of Blaze. Now you're probably looking at this and being like, oh, this is a secret rare. That doesn't make sense. I don't actually have a common card to show you, but the common capture energy from Darkness or from Rebel Clash is near mint common. It is currently at a dollar and eighteen cents. That means if you bought capture energy for a penny, you would be over a hundred xing your 
what you could sell this card for. And if you've been sitting on a bunch of capture energies or you haven't sold them because their price has been fluctuating, now is the time to do it before the rotation hits. The next card that we have from Rebel Clash is Speed Lightning Energy. Speed Lightning Energy has been good in a plethora of decks, as I've said, for some of these other cards, and is currently sitting at $1.25 on TCG player market price. The next card you should be selling is Aurora Energy from Sword and Shield base set. This card is extremely good right now in the Lugia V-Star deck. It is one that is going to rotate, it's going to be missed, and it's a powerful card that's been around for a while. Cards similar to this in older formats like Rainbow Energy have historically been good, but this is one of the first times that I've seen that the card is actually over a dollar. So Aurora Energy is a solid one. It's been bulk for a long time. With Lugia being released, this might be something that you have in your bulk that you didn't know was worth something. Next up, another card that has risen because of Lugia V-Star, Powerful Colorless Energy. This card adds damage to Lugia's attacks, and similarly to the Aurora Energy, this card has crept up in value because it is getting so much tournament play. Lugia V-Star has won several regional championships at this point, making it a deck that is in high demand for people to buy and play. Powerful Colorless Energy is currently sitting at $1.93, definitely going to be something that you're going to want to look out for in your bulk. Next up is going to be Training Court. Training Court is currently sitting at a marketplace price of $2.11. This card is extremely good. It's been played in Palkia V-Star. It allows you to get a basic energy from your discard pile and put it into your hand. If you've had a bunch of Rebel Clash bulk, buy this card up for a couple pennies, sell it before April, and you're going to be able to rake in some nice profits. The last two cards are also from Rebel Clash. So if you're seeing the trend here, Rebel Clash is definitely the set that you should be looking for if you're starting to buy bulk. If you're buying unsorted commons and uncommons, Rebel Clash has one of the best values in terms of the smaller dollar cards that you could buy up and get tons of return. One of the nice things about common and uncommon cards is there's tons of them and they're very plentiful. So if you buy commons and uncommons off of someone, this is a great way to get some of these cards. The next one up is going to be Twin Energy. Twin Energy comes in at a $2.34 market price in near mint condition. Pretty crazy. $2.34 for a card that you can buy for a penny. And the last card, this card's been a behemoth for a while. I think I remember this card being around $4.99 when it started coming out and when it's really got its first play, but that's going to be Scoop Up Net. Scoop Up Net is incredibly good. It's both very powerful in Standard and Expanded. People have thought about getting this card banned. I can't remember if it is, but it's extremely, extremely good. It allows you to pick up Pokemon from your uh, board and then put them back down or do a whole bunch of combinations of things. Scoop Up Net is currently sitting at a TCG player market price of $2.57. Now, I got a question on one of the videos saying, how do you buy Pokemon cards? And when we're talking about all of these cards that I just listed here, this is a really easy way to get Pokemon cards for cheap. If you go around to people and you look for their bulk, specifically bulk, you post up some buy rates, you say, I want to buy all your commons and uncommons for a penny or half a penny. That's how you can get really good amounts of cards for really cheap. It's a lot harder in 2023 to be able to go and offer people 60% on their collections because more people are aware of what they have and what it's worth. But if you take the time to build a whole business around this and you know that you can process tons of commons and uncommons and find cards like these ones that you can then sell for more, this is an excellent way to not only make it so that the customer on the receiving end is getting fair value for their cards, but also that you are making returns on the cards that you're buying. It does take a lot of effort, but think about it. If you have hundreds of these cards, this adds up really quickly, and if we just take a look here at some of the cards that I've been able to look through recently, that's a whole lot of pal pads that I've just kind of been sitting on. So pal pads at 61 cents, that's a lot of 61 cents adding up, and of course the fees. Now, you're probably wondering, how did I get this list of 10? I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can go and pull data from TCG Player for yourself to use in your business. Let's go. For those of you that have been watching the Lab TCG for over a year now, you are very familiar with this view. If you're new here, this is Will on a webcam on TCGplayer.com. So today I'm going to be showing you how you go into the back end of TCG Player and how you can pull the data for pretty much anything that you want to do and filter by custom results. So for step one, you don't even have to sell cards on TCG Player if you want to have access to this information. Simply create a seller account and then you can access it that way. But if you do have a seller account, here's what you're going to want to do. Go to the top right where it says Welcome Back Lab TCG. Hit your uh, little person here. Go over here to Seller Portal. This is going to load up. And now we are on the back end of TCG Player. 
and now go to the pricing tab. Now this pricing tab is actually pretty neat. You can do all sorts of stuff here, but for our purposes, we're going to be pulling data out of TCG player and using it to figure out what little thresholds we want to find. So I'm going to be showing you how to figure out all the cards that are rotating and what sets, what prices you would want your thresholds to be. So we're going to go and click this export filtered CSV comma separated values. Now click this. We are going to be looking at Pokemon, so change this drop down to Pokemon. Now for set names, depending on what you're doing, you can be as creative as you want with this, but we're going to stick to the theme of the video, which is like rotation. So first thing we want to do is take Sword and Shield base set. You can also do Sword and Shield promo card if you want, but I'm going to leave it out. Rebel Clash, Darkness Ablaze, Vivid Voltage, and Shining Fates, which is not in the Sword and Shield stuff, so you want to go here. And you could also do the shiny bolt, but for now, we're going to take these five sets. These are the sets with the regulation D marks. Then down here, you can do conditions. I only want to look at near mint. For rarities, I'm going to go with commons and uncommons. You could also do rares here, but for our purposes, we want to stick to the bulk that we're looking at. Then languages, English, printings. You can do all printings, which is going to basically be the difference between a holofoil and a non-holofoil. So that's what we want to do. Now, this, this section of right here is really interesting. If you uncheck, do not compare price against. Now you can do change this price to either TCG direct low. So if you're a seller on TCG player direct, you can see which cards are selling for what amount on TCG player direct low. You can do the low price with shipping, or you can do the TCG player market price. That's what I'm going to be going with. And then you want the value to be greater than point four nine. This is going to show us all the cards that are over uh, 49 cents, which is 50 cents and above. You can set this to whatever threshold you want. So if you want to see commons and uncommons that are over a dollar, you'd put a dollar here. If you want to see over 25 cents, put 25 or 24 cents. It all depends on what type of business you're running, what things you're doing. For me, I like to sell cards on TCG player that are over 50 cents in value. So we're going to go ahead and start there. So then hit export filtered CSV. Once that goes ahead and downloads, you're going to go ahead and open this file. You should have Microsoft Excel. It's pretty important. And now we have this. So after we're going to apply some little quick edits, we're going to remove this first column. Actually, first we're going to select all, and then we're going to make it so that we can read everything. We all know that this is Pokemon, so we can remove this. The set name is going to be useful for determining what we want. You can remove this title. Uh, if you want the number, you can have it, the rarity, there's a condition, the market price is what we're going to be looking at. So then for all this other stuff, we're going to go ahead and just remove that. So now that we're looking at this information, we have the set name, we have the card name, we have the number, the rarity, the condition, and the market price. Now, if you're new to Excel here, you can go ahead and do a few things. So the first thing that I want to do is sort this market price by the uh, number value. So here we go. We sort that real quick. And now we have a market price of 50 cents as our lowest. And if we go to the bottom, the highest is $7.07. That means there's an uncommon that's worth $7 right now on TCG player. So that's pretty cool. Then for this condition, if you only want to look at cards that are regular commons and uncommons, that's how we got our list. So here we have the nine cards of the 10 that we were looking at earlier uh, for value. And if you look at that, 55 cents for horror psychic energy, 61 for pal pad, and the list goes on. But if we remove all these filters, we can also just check by holofoil. So if we filter this again, we can go to holofoil and now we can see some interesting stuff. So when you're going through your bulk, if you're using bulk lots or something else, and you want to find specifically the cards that are going to sell for a certain amount, here you have Galarian Linoon, Haunter, Hitmonlee, all of this stuff. Another thing you can do is you can use conditional formatting to then go highlight cells. And if it's greater than, let's say 0.99, you can highlight those cells in red. So now when you're looking at all the holofoils and you want to know, okay, what cards are over a dollar? Now you know that these ones are over a dollar. Some of these interesting ones to point out, Hyper Potion, Evolution, Incense, all that stuff. So these are all the cards that are going to be rotating. You could also do this with any information for any set. So once rotation occurs and you want to see what are the most valuable bulk cards then, then you would just go into that little uh, dialog box and you would change everything to be uh, battle styles on essentially. So that's going to be a little intro to how I determine what prices I use for my bulk. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.